Hey there guys, in this video we're going to be going back to Mimicris and we're going to be getting a rank 1 clear that doesn't use any leader skills whatsoever. So this is a team for those of you that just didn't pull any of the leaders. You don't have Ibarra, you don't have Deoxys, you don't have Rain, you don't have Dwayne, but you do have some strong units overall. So we're going to do rank 1. Now I do have to say it's pretty tricky to do a rank 1 clear with no leader skill, but it is doable and I'm going to show it to you. So let's get in here and give it a go. But this is, you know, not really a budget run or anything. You do need strong gear to pull this off and some specific units. Okay. So to start off, we've got some, you know, auto casting on the party. We're going to go ahead and let that finish. <coughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is Emperor Vlad in the base form is going to sing Zidane's STMR for that 300% LB buff for later. Chizuru is going to Strong, Staunch, and Eastern Winds. We're going to use Ala to just fill the morale gauge and break with both her breaks, both her killers, and Giant Melon. Melissa is going to do Shelga, Shared Immunity, and Chronic Flow. Lilith is going to imbue the party with darkness with unstoppable corruption. It's also going to imperil the boss. Uh, we're going to do Shroud for the Omni cover because turn one we want high mitigation. And then Betrayal. And then we're going to triple bolting in the ship form with um, 2B. Okay. So we don't have as much mitigation on this party as usual, so the damage is a little bit more of a problem. But, um, you know, we've got it worked out. We're going to use, like, uh, Darkness Absorb and all that to deal with it. Okay. So turn two, what we're going to do, we're going to use Melissa to do Parasol Shield, Minutes of Might, and Dark or Abyssal Blessing for the Ramping Dark Amplify. We can just reload Olive to fill the LB gauge again. I'm sorry, the morale gauge. We're gonna shift the LB to B. We're going to stone killer with Chizuru, and we're going to base form LB Lilith. So we're gonna go ahead and send these first, because these, these properly chain. And obviously, as you can see here, the damage is not really a factor yet. We're gonna do more damage later. But anyway, so that did a bunch of stuff. Not really damage. <laughs> And as you can see, the, the, the damage we take on this team is a little bit higher with Lilith because we're not using things like good physical mitigation. One of Lilith's bigger problems is we're just not doing like more than 50 physical mitigation for the most part. Okay, so now Melissa is going to triple all her killers on 2B. Um, the beast killer is important, but the rest of them are just to fill the morale gauge. Chizuru is going to go to the Brave Shift form. It's very important you Brave Shift Chizuru on this turn, and you use Tyvus' Spirit in the Shift form. We need that for the cooldown. Um, 2B will also use Tyvus' Spirit. Olive will just reload again for the morale game. And Lilith is going to do Rapture, Unending Nightmare for the Physical Stone mitigation, and then Bar Dark Ja. We need the Dark Resist as well. Okay, so a little bit of damage on this turn. Lilith might get hit pretty hard, but she's not going to die or anything, though. Our morale gauge is maxed out at this point. Yeah, there we go. We're fine. Okay, now it is time to do some burst. I'll talk about more. I'll talk more about the burst in a second, but let's go ahead and get some um, buffs going first. So we're now finished Zidane's STMR on Vlad. We're now going to shift Vlad and do the shifted LB for the Imperil field. Okay, Chizuru will do her shifted LB. 2B will go to the base form and do her LB. Olive will SLB, Lilith will SLB. We'll use both of the stat buffs from the morale bar. And Melissa will give a beast killer to Lilith. We'll also do Shelga. And we're going to do uncontrollable darkness. That way the physical damage of the boss will be absorbed. Because going forward, we're going to be taking a lot of physical damage. Um, 
So we're going to use Darkness Absorb basically for the rest of the fight. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do our Burst. Now, for the Burst, if we don't do 2.5 billion, it is okay. We're going to Burst again very hard later in the fight. So if you don't get the damage cap, don't worry about it. If you push the Threshold, or if you don't push the Threshold, it doesn't matter. If we push the Threshold on turn 4, it's fine. If we don't, it's fine. The turn chart does not change. So let's go ahead and do with some damage. If Variance is high, we'll damage cap. If Variance is not high, we won't. We may or may not push the Threshold. We didn't, that is totally okay. But we did do the damage cap, 2.7 billion damage. Now, we are absorbing the physical damage of the boss this turn. Um, we imbued him with darkness, so we're taking no damage. That's a gravity attack. It'll never kill you. So don't don't be afraid of that. Okay, so the fight will change very slightly if the boss pushed the threshold or not on turn four. The only thing that really changes is the mirage. Just follow the turn chart exactly as it says, no matter if you push the threshold or not. The turn chart doesn't change. It's just that some turns... It'll, it'll look different because of the Mirage stacks. Anyway, Vlad is now going to dual wield Barrage, first action. That's going to hit eight times to get rid of eight Mirage stacks. Also, Lilith will basically always counter and get rid of um, and get rid of Mirage uh, two stacks that way. So now Mirage is gone. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna push the rest of that threshold. So we're going to triple R40 with 2B, we're going to Devastating with Chizuru. Olive will do her stuff and cap. We're going to use Lilith to put up Cover, Rapture, and Betrayal. And Melissa is now going to give us three turns of Darkness Absorb. So we're going to All Consuming Darkness to put up three turns of Absorption. We're going to Shared Immunity, and we're going to Refresh Beast Killer on 2B. Okay, and we can go ahead and use the attack and magic buff. And we'll go ahead and um, click Olive first to get her multicast going. And we'll push that threshold here. Also, uh, Lilith heals the party up. Okay, threshold pushed. And if you had pushed the threshold on turn four, now the boss would just be lower in health on turn on phase two. Uh, the boss would be at like, you know, 40% healthier, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so there's the threshold. So now the boss once again has Mirage. So Vlad is going to use Barrage and get rid of eight stacks. Now because that was the threshold, the boss didn't actually attack us. So therefore, um, we're only gonna remove eight out of 10 stacks with Vlad's Barrage. So we're gonna use Olive to just use dual summer shot. This is a, this is a double strike attack. It's gonna get rid of the last two stacks of Mirage. Um, we will also, let me look at my turn chart real quick, refresh my memory. Yeah, never mind. Uh, so we'll do that, and then we'll just do, um, let's see, we'll dual summer shot. We'll go ahead and gunner guardian as well. Beast killer, whatever, whatever. Okay, there. Now the mirage is gone. So what we're now going to do with, Lilith, with Melissa, we're going to start her big dark amplify again. We're going to Beast Killer on Lilith, and we're going to Bar Dark Joe this turn. Remember, we have three turns of Darkness Absorption, so we're, we're going to take zero damage from the boss's physical attacks. Uh, we are going to Shift 2B and do the Shifted LB. We are going to Stone Killer on Chizuru in the base form, and Lilith is going to do Unstoppable for the Imperil and Double Betrayal. Now, we're going to... Let's go ahead and do the attack and magic buff. So we're going to click Lilith first to get that Dark Imperil, then we're gonna chain 2B and Shizuru to do a little bit of damage here. We're just like, you know, slowly chipping the boss down for the, uh, the second kill. Okay, some attacks. We are still absorbing the physical damage, so no big deal here. Or absorbing or resisting it because the boss is still imbued. Turn 7, the boss is still imbued with darkness because of Melissa, which is awesome. Okay, so what Melissa is going to do... First of all, let's do the shifted LB of Vlad to refresh that field. Let's have Melissa 
do cover, not, not cover, I'm sorry. Let's have Melissa do parasol for mitigation. We're gonna do minutes to might, and we're gonna do beast killer on Lilith again. I, I, I know we did it last turn, but we're doing it again this turn. Okay, 2B in the shift form is now gonna use type as a spirit. In the base form, Shizuru is going to type as a spirit. This is giving us, um, you know, big, big burst for next turn. Olive is going to do, um, you know, her setup type stuff. Finishing with her Magnus. And then Lilith is going to put up cover again. We're going to Rapture and Betrayal to seal the boss and all that. Uh, remember the boss is still um, imbued with darkness. So we're going to take, you know, again, basically no damage here, other than the very weak magical damage. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and burst again. We're probably going to kill the boss. If your variance is absolutely horrible, the boss may survive this turn, but it doesn't matter either way. Um, so we did counter a few Mirage stacks away that turn, but the boss does have Mirage. So once again, Vlad is going to dual wield Barrage. That's going to get rid of eight Mirage stacks. Wait for this to finish. Okay, there we go. So Chizuru is now going to Brave Shift and use the Shifted LB. We're going to go to the base form with 2B. Base form LB, SLB Lilith, SLB Olive. Let's go ahead and do the big 400% buffs from the morale bar. And Melissa is now going to use seconds of support. This is a big modifier buff and it double dips on 2B. So we're going to use that on 2B. We're going to use Beast Killer on 2B and we're going to refresh Shelga just in case the boss doesn't die on this turn. But he will. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and burst again. This is probably going to kill the boss and the fight will be over if the boss does not die on turn 8. Just finish him off on turn 9 and turn 10. Now, if the boss doesn't die, there is a good chance that Lilith will get killed during this turn. But she will re-raise and you'll be totally fine. Just imbue the party with Melissa, chain up, and kill the boss off. The boss will be like, worst case scenario, at like 3 or 4% health. But we're probably going to kill the boss right here. So let's go ahead and do our damage. And that should be a rank 1 clear without any leader skill whatsoever. Yeah, expected. And also, also, if you didn't damage cap on turn 4, then this should be your damage cap turn, 2.6. So if, if your turn 4 variance was extremely low, then turn, uh, turn 7 gives you another big burst to um, get that damage cap. <coughs> and okay, there was the rank 1, no leader skill whatsoever. And here is the damage breakdown. So 2B really does carry this fight um, with, without a leader skill. Uh, you know, Lilith, amazing here. Chizuru, um, damage. And then Olive is just breaker, morale fill, and support chaining. Um, I'll, let's, let's, go, let's, go, let's go ahead and go to the gear screen, and I'll discuss some alternatives. Um, still don't have my ticket. All right. Okay, so the most swappable unit in this party is Chizuru. Chizuru is not really bringing anything specific other than some decent damage. Um, Chizuru does have Stone Killer, which is you know nice in Phase Two, but we have Stone Killer in Phase One anyway because of Lilith. So if you have Rain, Ibarra, or Duane, any of those, swap out Chizuru and add them and make them your leader. That will be the most direct swap you can do: is swapping Chizuru with a good leader skill. And they all deal more damage than Chizuru anyway. And that'll make it dramatically easier to damage cap. Um, Vlad's field is pretty important. Also, Vlad does do the Zidane STMR for like 300% LB buff, which you don't need if you've got Ch if you've got um, Dwayne or Rain. But um, I guess Vlad is replaceable as well. You could, repl again, replace Vlad with a leader skill unit, and you'll be totally fine again. Um, same thing with Olive. Olive is um, not a big deal. She is our primary breaker, so if you don't have Olive, someone's got to break. So, you know, Abigail or Flaring Rain or um, there's no other good breakers for this fight. Kaito would work, but Kaito is really a dead slot. So, um, yeah. 
Uh, Melissa for this clear specifically is kind of important because obviously she's our 100% dark amplify. Um, but if you have a leader skill, then you probably don't need Melissa, but you would need someone to fill the morale gauge. So if you don't have Melissa, you probably want Sylvie or Kresnik to morale fill. And as far as Lilith, if you're using a leader skill, you can just swap her out for Runda. If you don't have a leader skill, we kind of need Lilith's damage. Okay, so here is the gear and the turn chart will be in the comments. So um, Lilith is our tanker, little bit of dark resist, you don't need a ton. Um, there we go, uh, you know, LB damage versus stone and stone and beast, um, no leader skill, maxed LB, max beast, and 275 stone, only 10,000 defense without a leader skill, big sad. Um, Melissa is provoking, there are a few single target magic attacks in this fight, I didn't realize that, um, she's provoking for all of them, uh, other than that, whatever, morale fill, peppermint rod, her own car, just for some morale fill. Um, that being said, morale is not really a big deal in this fight, so I went kind of overboard, but there it is. Uh, Olive is just a chainer and breaker, other than that, whatever. Um, LB damage versus beast and stone, she does gear for this very easily because she has high beast killer. Uh, maxed LB, max beast, and maxed stone. Um, 2B is a big damage dealer. Now, in the base form, Here's 2B. You know, she is the big carry for this fight. So all the best possible gear, all the Clash gear, if you have it, the, the, the Dark Visions Katana, um, Chain Speed, you know, all in for her set up in the base form. And she is uh, maxed on literally everything. In the Shift form, it's a little different. Because we need to get her LB filled after Tybus Spirit, which is not a guarantee, we're using her STMR as well as something like Guardian of Light Kyrie or uh, Dagger Mastery or whatever. High class dagger from the permanent uh, five star Riku STMR. Basically some um, some LB fill and then Tyvus' Spirit in the shift form and then 12 LB per turn. Other than that, gear her shift form for some damage. Chizuru in the base form. Um, uh, some morale stuff, Typhus' Spirit, other than that, whatever. Here's the high-class dagger I was talking about. If you don't have Kyrie's STMR, use this instead for 6 LB per turn. It's a permanent item. Shift form is LB damage versus Beast and Stone. Typhus' Spirit in the shift form as well on Chizuru. Very, very important because um, we need her to shift on turn 3 so that her trance cooldown does properly line up. And then Vlad is dual wielding. Um, dual wielding with Barrage, also using Zidane's STMR. Other than that, a morale card, dual wield morale card, um, and a lot of LB fill so that we can use his LB twice um, in, in the shift form. And then shift form, same thing, dual wielding, Barrage, Zidane's STMR, um, and yeah, he is literally just a support unit. Okay. There is the no leader skill rank one. I will do more clears later. Also, I've seen people say, please do more dark visions and all that with Dwayne. Um, I will see what I can do this weekend. Okay, see you in a bit.